grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Make me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Welcome to you at home for this service of daily prayer for the 14th Sunday after Trinity. The pandemic has reached a new and dangerous phase, but I felt encouraged by the Archbishop of Canterbury's words of encouragement this week, as we are now forbidden from social gatherings of more than six people. I quote, After contact with government, we hear that there is no change to guidance on places of worship. Worship is the work of God, not a social gathering, and gives strength to love and serve. May you at home, joining our worship today, be strengthened to love and serve. Our readings today focus on forgiveness and reconciliation. Today there are live services at St John the Baptist Boylston and Christchurch Long Lane. We begin with verses from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger for ever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished 
to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison, until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. We've just heard the end of the story of Joseph. Joseph, one of the twelve sons of Jacob. It is one of the best plots in the Bible. Jealousy, family conflict, betrayal, false accusation, slavery, lies, tricks, and finally, redemption through repentance, reconciliation, and forgiveness. It's a story with enormous stage potential. So it's little wonder that Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber made such a success of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. After Joseph's brothers have sold him into slavery, he is taken to Egypt. As Joseph rises up in the household of Potiphar, Pharaoh's captain of the guard, the Bible tells us the Lord was with Joseph. If you don't know or can't remember all the twists and turns of Joseph's life history, the story can be found between chapters 37 and 50 of the book of Genesis. It is an exciting read. Today's reading comes from the end of the story. Joseph's brothers are facing up to their crime and asking forgiveness of Joseph. All are overcome with emotion at this moment of reconciliation. It is Joseph who realises that it is God who has used the evil actions of his brothers for good. Joseph was in the right place at the right time. He was able to prepare for the famine that affected both the land of Canaan and Egypt and save his family and the people of Egypt from starvation. Joseph's God-given skills as an interpreter of dreams annoyed his brothers who found him irritatingly stuck up. But in Egypt, Joseph was able to put his ability to interpret the dreams of others to good use and anticipate the famine which was to come. As he is reconciled to his brothers, Joseph is able to declare, even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. It is the action of God within Joseph that enables this act of forgiveness and reconciliation to take place. How many times have you heard, or perhaps even said yourself, 
I can never forgive so-and-so for what they did. And then some recollection of hurt is recounted. The problem with this is that without forgiveness, the original hurt goes on eating away at the victim, so the hurt is felt again and again. Forgiveness is a means of ridding oneself of the hurt. The original sin may not be forgotten, but it is no longer something that stands between you and the perpetrator, and you are no longer diminished by it. Joseph's repentant brothers are liberated from their guilt, and Joseph is freed from his sense of hurt. But like Joseph, we are not called to be passive recipients of the divine work, the divine at work within us, but to find our vocation by responding with equal acts of generosity and use of our skills. We are called to be co-workers with God in the world. The Lord's Prayer reminds us that we receive God's forgiveness according to the measure with which we are able to forgive others. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Jesus' parable illustrates what happens when we fail to do this. The first slave was forgiven the enormous debt of 10,000 talents, but his immediate reaction to this generous act of forgiveness was to find his fellow slave who owed him a tiny debt and insisting on being repaid at once. Jesus shows us that the acts of being forgiven and forgiving others are intricately connected. Can you remember the action of Gordon Wilson following the Inniskilling bombing during the Troubles in Northern Ireland? At a Remembrance Day parade in 1987, a bomb planted by the provisional IRA exploded, injuring Gordon Wilson and killing his daughter. Only hours after the bombing, Wilson described his final conversation with his dying daughter as they both lay buried in rubble. His words, I bear no ill will, I bear no grudge, were reported worldwide. Wilson's subsequent calls for forgiveness and reconciliation came to be called the spirit of Enniskilling. Forgiving the bombers enabled him to live undiminished by their action and in the knowledge and love of God, Wilson became involved in the movement for peace. Peter's question to Jesus implies he thinks there is some sort of scorekeeping associated with forgiveness. Christ once for all sacrifice on the cross shows us that we are forgiven without measure, but the mercy and grace of forgiveness we receive from God is the gift we are called to share with those who have injured us. Amen. We are now going to hear the hymn, Be Thou My Guardian and My Guide, and Hear Me When I Call, sung by the voices of St Martin in the fields.
Let us, by prayer and intercession with thanksgiving, make our requests to God. Gracious God, we pray for forgiveness and reconciliation throughout the world. We give thanks for all that is gracious in acts of forgiveness in the lives of men, women and children. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. We pray for the renewal of the church in faith, love and service, that it may model God's kingdom on earth, offering hope to the despairing, peace to the distressed, food to the hungry, forgiveness to those who seek it, and refreshment to the weary, that it may be a place where conflict is resolved through mutual love and consent. We pray for Libby, our bishop, and for the life of these parishes of the Longford Eight Benefice. We give thanks for the gift of your word and the fellowship of your people. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. We pray for our local communities and for all people in their daily life and work, for those whose work is undertaking research into vaccines and treatment against COVID-19 all who have been adversely affected by the pandemic. Help us, as the pandemic is increasing again, to adhere to government guidelines. Give us patience and special care for our neighbours. We give thanks for your gifts of human skill and creativity and all that reveals your love in the world. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. We pray for those who are in need, for the sick, the sorrowful and the bereaved. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. We give thanks for human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. We pray for those on the verge of death. May they know your presence with them. We give thanks for those who have lived and died in the faith of Christ. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, Accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of your, your Son, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And the Collect for the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.